Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 172 of Cup Fans Minecraft Let's Play. Last time we did this seafood restaurant. Everything's looking dandy here. And now we are ready to move on to some other builds in Zerzera. Zera. So, um, I think we're going to start off today with a town square, which uh, is going to be in this region here. And for the town square, I want to make a big Z instead of just like a, like a square square. Um, so the Z will actually start probably around here, and it'll make its way back over to this path somewhere in this region. Uh, and then sort of come diagonally this way, as the letter Z tends to do. <laughs> and then we'll come back uh, towards the, uh, the seafood restaurant, and it'll terminate about here. Uh, as far as like blocks, I think polished andesite is what I'm going to go with there. Uh, we might also come up with some type of lighting situation where um, we have like lamps... Um, lit up at night around this area uh, that could be kind of cool and yeah I'm, I'm sort of debating if I should get rid of this terrain or not I think I'm gonna keep it for now see if I can incorporate it into it but if it gets to be a little bit uh, in the way then I'll just get rid of it but um, yeah we're gonna start off with the town square today so let's build this thing right now okay everybody so I uh, got a little work done on this park I uh, still haven't done any of the lighting yet but let me sort of walk you through what we got. So first of all, let's tower up here and see the Z from above. So I did go ahead and use um, polished andesite. So there you go. There's the Z. I went ahead and kept it so that like the uh, the terrain is the same. And yeah, inside the uh, the interior of the Z, I went with red sandstone. So that's what we went with there. So let's go ahead and get back down. Uh, you can see I did put some green around some greenery I need to get some leaves for like bushes that will definitely add a lot but I'm just letting the grass spread as you can tell right now and so I wanted some stuff to do in this like little town square area so this little park area here so I added some note blocks so you can do some stuff there I also added this little uh, children's ride here so you just flick the lever and you just go back and forth back and forth back and forth like that and yeah you can let that run and we'll, once we put villagers in there it'll be funny to see if a villager gets stuck in there uh, at some point but yeah that's that as well we got some benches around here we got these little uh, mushroom blocks as well uh, from giant mushrooms we got some other brown ones as well uh, so we're gonna let this grass spread around a little bit gonna add a uh, some bushes I think and then maybe down this little brick path here maybe like a little uh, water fountain over here that could be cool with like a maybe like a, a bench or two around it so yeah this area is starting to come together a little bit um, but yeah like I said need to add some bushes need to add a little bit more greenery and the water fountain over there as well so I'll be back once that is done all right, everybody, so we made a bunch of changes. Uh, so we added a bunch of foliage. So we have some bushes all around here. We have a bunch of flowers that we added. Uh, we got uh, a whole new section back there with the waterfall and such. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, we also added like a little water fountain here, which is just a brewing stand, obviously. And then some gates here for the kitty ride. So you come in this way and you go out that way on along the brick paths here. But I think it's looking pretty good now. Let me just get a water bucket here. From the uh, magic well. Alright, and should pop out there. There we go. Sweet. Alright, yeah, I also added this little water fountain back here with some benches and some flowers, as you can see. So here's a little bench here, there's a bench on the other side. Grass is still spreading on that dirt over there. But uh, yeah, we got this waterfall here. Uh, so I'm just going to get some water for it. And the sun is starting to set, so we should just get one more. We should see this uh, light up once the sun goes down. So let me grab this water bucket here. There we are. Fantastic. We'll finish off this waterfall. Just like that. Everything should flow down in a nice symmetrical pattern. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, it'll look even better once, uh, once it lights up at night and once this grass grows over here. But yeah, that's that. Uh, let's go ahead and put down some oak leaves over here too. Just to sort of like some foliage around the, the back side here. Doesn't have to be in any particular place really. 
Just have some around, you know, here and there. Just a little bit, not too much. Put one there. Put a few there. That looks pretty good. Let's put a little bit more back here as well. I like that. I like foliage. There we go. Okay, so now it's getting a little bit dark, and we should be able to watch this whole thing light up. It should light up pretty much at once. Yep, there it is. So you see all the lamps in this uh, town square lit up at once, and you'll see that the waterfall in back is indeed illuminated. So that looks pretty cool, I think. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look from above what it looks like. So we'll just hop over here. And we'll tower up a little bit just to see what the aerial view looks like. I think it should be pretty good. Yep, there we go. Right there. That is a pretty good town square, I feel. A little Z for Zara Zara. <laughs> and yeah, I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. Um, I might add one more lamp in the back there, but I think it, it's actually pretty good with those lamps underneath the waterfall. So, yeah, that is the town square for Zara Zara done. Uh, pretty happy with it. And now we can move on to another building uh, over here. So the next building we're going to build is the post office, and we're going to build that right here in this section. Um, so what I want to do is have two entrances to this as well. Um, so we'll have one entrance... Uh, at the front over here, so it'll be like a door going in here. Uh, we'll have windows in the front here, and then we'll have um, another entrance over here. So we'll have like a like an overhang. So probably like like right here. And so these pillars will go up like this, and then across, and then there'll be a, like a double door here that we can go into. And then we'll have like storage and such back here. We'll have like a counters and such right here. And we'll have like personal mailboxes and things uh, in this region here. Um, and of course we'll have a bunch of windows and stuff. I want to do more of a traditional post office. Um, so like bricks and such. Uh, so we'll have to get some more bricks because we're running pretty low on those actually. Um, but yeah, this is going to be more like a traditional um, slash modern post office. Um, instead of like the old wooden post offices or uh, like gothic inspired post offices that some people might be familiar with. So yeah, let's go ahead and build this. Uh, I'll need to get some clay, uh, but I'll get some of that and we'll start to build this thing up. So like I said, we have to go get some more clay, but I want to do an enchant first. Uh, I'm not sure I want to repair this. If I can get a fortune 3 on this as well, it'd be great. So let's do an enchant here. So let's just... Pop this in, pop this in, and we should get level 30. I usually don't like doing tool enchants without getting level 30 first, although we could do level 28, but nah, we got the resources to get to level 30 here. Just get some bottles of enchanting going. Got these from villager trading. Almost perfect. There we go. You can still get these, but not in the quantities that I got them uh, pre pre 1.8 so yeah level 30 now sweet uh, let's go ahead and do this so pop it in fortune 2 okay hopefully it has unbreaking 3 and efficiency 4 on it ooh unbreaking 3 efficiency 3 okay well still not I'll tell you what let's combine these <laughs> I don't like it when it doesn't have efficiency 4 on it 23 that way 13 that way alright Perfect. Um, yeah. So we got to go get some clay now. So let's head out. Let's make a boat and let's head out and get some clay. Okay, guys. So this is the progress I've made so far on this post office. So um, while I'm building, I'm going to try and tell a little story here. Uh, this is a story about how I got attacked by a goose on a golf course. Yep, that happened. <laughs> so... Yeah, so let's get into it. So, um, basically in high school I was on a golf team, uh, on, my, on my school team, and why I did not make any bricks, dang. Um, so yeah, I was on my school golf team, and one day we had practice, and um, we basically went out just like a normal day, and I teed off on, I think it was the sixth hole, and then all hell broke loose. 
Apparently, I had walked in between a male goose and its partner. And if you don't know, geese are very, very, very territorial. And so it was hissing at me, and uh, I didn't really think too much of it. Let's see, how do I want to make this go? I guess we'll have it come this way. Yeah, this should be good. Uh, so, I, yeah, it was hissing at me, and, yeah, it didn't like me at all in the uh, vicinity of itself. So, um, basically, it attacked. It it flew at me. Um, you know, <laughs> wings flapping. Those things generate a lot of force. You can feel the breeze when they are coming in for landing. I mean, you don't lift, you know, 20, 30 pounds off the ground. Uh, maybe even more. I'm not sure exactly on the weight of geese, but you don't lift that type of weight without generating a lot of force. And yeah, it came right at me. Uh, one of my friends yelled, run! <laughs> and so I hightailed it, you know, uh, with my golf bag on my back um, down the fairway. So, you know, I'm running clink, 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 clink. My clubs are clinking in the back. The, the geese is behind me hissing, almost like a creeper um, in Minecraft. And so... Yeah, I was running, and the, go the goose was coming up behind me, and apparently geese can pack a pretty good wallop with their wings and the force of their body hitting you uh, if you're running away from them. So it hit me, and I face-planted directly into a bunker. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it, I wasn't really injured that badly or anything, but um, yeah, immediately I sprung back, back up, so I got up from the bunker, boom. And I thought, okay, this goose is coming around for another pass. So he was like circling around, coming back for the kill, basically. And so, um, I decided I'd run for the woods. Because, you know, if you can hide under a tree like this, cower under a tree, uh, the goose can't, you know, attack you from above. Um, because, yeah, with, with the goose knocking me down, I had learned the power of air superiority. So, um... I, w I made a break for a wooded area, and as I did so, um, the goose followed. Luckily, my tactic worked. He couldn't, you know, fly into the trees where I was hiding out. Not really hiding out, I guess just like standing. Uh, trying to determine what I would I would do next. And uh, I got a club out to sort of, you know, keep it at distance. But those suckers can waddle pretty fast. I'm not going to lie. Um, he was... Sneaking around one side of the tree, and I would go around the other side. Um, kind of like a cat and mouse game. And at one point, uh, he reached out and bit my um, bit my leg. So I had a little duck-shaped, beak-shaped uh, indentation on my leg for a little while. It actually drew blood. Those suckers bite hard. I'm not going to lie. Um, so yeah, uh, he bit me on the knee. And at that point, I freaking went into rage mode. Um, because... Yeah, you, I guess you have like a flight or f fight or flight response uh, whenever something like that happens and you get a big kick of adrenaline. So as soon as that happened, I went into beast mode, took out my five iron from my bag. So I had my five iron in my hand and I just bam, 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 whacked the goose a couple of times uh, while bad mouthing it. Like, oh, you son of a bitch, I'm going to kill you, you know. So here I am just beating the hell out of this goose <laughs> on the golf course. And... Um, and my friend comes over and is like, hey, are you okay, dude? And I sort of, you know, snapped out of it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm fine, man. I'm fine. I'm fine. And the goose was sort of like walking around dazed. He was still hissing at me and threatening to charge. Like, they'll, they'll run up to you threatening to charge. And usually if you don't move, they won't they won't actually charge you. Um, but this one was still, you know, coming at me like he wanted to still, still fight me. And I'm like, dude, I could kill you with this five iron. Uh, eventually, he sort of got tired of me I guess and just sort of walked away figured I wasn't worth it turns out the same goose um, actually attacked another guy attacked another guy that same week and so the golf course actually had to call the animal control and have them remove the goose from the uh, from the course had it relocated elsewhere um, yeah, so the moral of the story is do not mess with geese. They are insanely territorial. No doubt. Um, also, bonus of that little adrenaline boost when I started to beat that duck's ass, or that goose's ass, 
Um, yeah, I bombed the drive on the next hole. Like, I think it was, I think I measured it at like 310 yards or so. So, absolutely bombed it. It was, it is slightly downhill, but uh, still, that's, that's a pretty good hit for a high school golfer. Um, anyway, yeah, that is my goose story. Uh, yeah, attacked by a, goof, a goose on a golf course, and, yeah, most geese, they're, they're, they're sort of territorial, it's a, it was a Canadian, uh, goose that attacked me, uh, they're territorial, but generally, stuff like that doesn't happen, um, still, especially during mating season, just be careful, this has been a PSA, I guess, <laughs> um, but yeah, seriously though, uh, just stay aware, uh, of your surroundings, I guess, and yeah, beware of geese who are in the process of mating uh, with a female goose. So that's my story, and <laughs> yeah, hopefully you guys found that kind of enjoying. Uh, I can tell other stories like this if you guys enjoyed this one. Um, and yeah, we'll continue to build up this post office a little bit. I think this is looking like a good height here. Yeah, I might add like a little window feature or something over on this side but yeah I think it's looking like a good height here and we're gonna put in a floor of course uh, and yeah we'll keep building this up and I'll be back uh, once it's done okay everybody so we got the post office complete as you can see here we see the big post sign on the uh, building itself here and we have a little entrance here with some windows some some bushes around the side some fancy torches and such walk on inside and you'll see we have another entrance on this far area here so it just goes out here to the road and these uh, chests on uh, fence posts are supposed to be like mailboxes so there's you know papers in them um, this is supposed to be just like a like an area where you can drop stuff off or whatever uh, this is supposed to be, you know, like that divider thing you see in a lot of post offices where you can, you know, put your stamps on your envelopes, put things in envelopes. There's en envelopes on this thing. Uh, that's what this is supposed to be, so you can, you know, get your stuff ready before you go to the counter here. Uh, the actual counter, you know, you have a place where you have to go and you have to wind through a huge line, uh, even though there's usually nobody, um, usually not a huge line at the post office. Uh, we got a redstone operating system here, so this is supposed to be like a little computer type deal. Um, and yeah, that's what that's supposed to be. And then we have outgoing, uh, outgoing mail here, incoming mail here, and then packages dropped off here. And we got little buttons and stuff, um, yeah, on this. And then of course in the back, we got like the little divider thing, got that. Got a bunch of storage, uh, again, incoming and outgoing mail, and these are supposed to be like the mail bins, those big carts they put stuff in, like they put letters in. Uh, that's what like, these cauldrons are supposed to be. Uh, this is supposed to be like a filing cabinet system here, and then we just got a bunch of, yeah, chests and, and whatnot, sort of uh, splayed out everywhere. So, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the post office, or my version of the post office. Didn't put a whole lot of functionality in here, um, although there is the potential for it. For instance, um, like right here, we could have it like weigh packages. So like if you threw something on here, we could have it do something underneath this. Maybe play like a chime or something if it got over a certain amount. Because this is a weighted pressure plate. Um, so that's one thing we could do. Um, another thing we could do is we could have like a little cart back here, like a cart system. Um, so you could put stuff in the cart and then send it to like another post office elsewhere if we make another one somewhere or to somebody's house or something like that uh, one of the villager houses so there is some uh, functionality we could use and these are supposed to be just like the small little mailboxes you get they don't actually do anything but there is a lot of potential for automation here if we want to do that so let me know if you guys think uh, any of those ideas would be cool to do um, but I think that's going to be it for me today guys um, let me move out here so yeah I think it looks okay in terms of the aesthetics let me move over this way I think it looks all right um, there is still some improvement to do especially on the roof roofs are probably my weakest building point I would say um, but I still think it looks it looks okay so I'm gonna leave it as it is for right now and we might return to it a little bit later on 
But, um, that is going to be all for me today. I need to find something to eat desperately because I am... My character is very hungry. Carrots. I usually have a lot of bread out here. I'll just take the carrots for now, though. So, yeah, guys. That's going to be all for me today. That's all I got time for. So, that is the post office. Finish eating here. Post office and the town square done. So, pretty darn cool. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the mineshaft and see what today's highlighted channel is. And we'll also talk a little bit about Minecraft 1.9, the combat update. So, we'll talk about that once we're done with the mineshaft. So, to the mineshaft. Okay, everybody, down here in the mineshaft now. And today's highlighted channel is the R Forzer Blade, or I guess the Razor Blade is what it's supposed to be. Um, so the Razor Blade left a comment last episode asking if I would play City Skylines, which is a new uh, city simulator game, which is making the rounds on YouTube t uh, right now, and it's a really popular game, really fun. It's kind of like, um, kind of like Sim City almost. And so, um, I just wanted to sort of address that. So I have been thinking about playing uh, Cities, um, City Skylines. So. Um, if you want me to play that game, do let me know. Uh, I'll also be coming out with a channel update video um, in a few days um, with a straw poll about which games you want me to play in the future uh, besides just Minecraft. So, like, uh, I've been thinking about GTA 5 on PC. That could be kind of cool. Um, I, I definitely enjoy G GTA 5 on PS3 uh, as I've played through it uh, once before. But yeah, I'd like to play it again if uh, we can get some mods in there from the uh, PC version and such. Uh, also, City Skylines. I've also been thinking about um, a game called Subnautica, which is like a submarine survival game. That seems pretty cool. Um, also, Planet Explorers and some other games um, involving outer space. So I will be coming out with a channel update video in a few days uh, with a straw poll where you guys can vote and determine which game you'd like to see next. So thank you for the comment, uh, Razorblade. This is your mind shift. Let's see how you do against the other competitors. All right, everyone. So I finished digging out the Razorblade's mine shaft, and we got 19 diamonds from his mine shaft. So here are the resources here. So pretty good mine shaft today. Also, he does have a YouTube channel, so check that out. Link in the description. And let's go ahead and ride on back via this minecart, because now it's time to talk about the combat update. 1.99. Sweet. All right. So, uh, yeah, the combat update will be Minecraft 1.9. That was revealed in the QR code in the snow um, on the April Fool's Day snapshot. And Dinnerbone confirmed it is not a joke. It is actually going to be the combat combat update. So let's uh, let's sort of go over exactly um, some of the known or sort of known features for 1.9. Uh, let me just turn my sound back up here. Zoop, 60%. Nice. All right, so yeah, let's go ahead and go over some of the features for 1.9 and some of the images that the devs have tweeted out. So first of all, um, there will be a new block, the village path block, as seen here. And this was in a tweet by Jeb. Uh, it's going to be... It was actually first suggested by a Reddit user. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll get new village path blocks, which is a good aesthetic block, in my opinion. Next up, uh, Dinnerbone is redoing the dragon fight, as seen in the tweet uh, image here. Tweeted image here. Um, so, in this image, you can sort of make out some cages around the ender crystal so perhaps like an iron bar cage around the ender crystal or something like that um, but he's gonna totally redo the ender dragon fight and in fact he tweeted another image out um, that shows the dragon um, similarly to uh, the I think it's the Xbox version uh, where the ender dragon spews ender acid so uh, here's an image of that right now um, so you can see the ender dragon sort of emitting some end particles um, from its mouth. So that will be an interesting change there in regards to the dragon fight. They've also said that they will... Um, whoop, where'd that map go? Dang it, guy. What? Where did, oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to update this map while we're, while we're talking here. So they've also said that um, they're going to allow... Uh, you to respawn the dragon if you've already defeated the dragon like we have. 
Uh, we got our ender dragon egg right down here. I believe, hopefully, if it hasn't been stolen or somehow moved. Yep, there it is. Locked securely in the vault. Nice. So they're redoing the dragon fight, and it should be really cool. Um, actually, in the April Fool's snapshot, not a lot of people noticed, but the dragon um, did attack with more uh, regularity. So it was about every five or ten seconds. Uh, it's not it's not clear if that's part of the new mechanics or not, but um, it should be really fun to see what they do with it nonetheless. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, also, they tweeted out some other stuff. So first of all, um, Dinnerbone has tweeted out uh, this image, and in this image you can see the uh, there are now multiple wither bars. Um, Dinnerbone has stated that the wither will be critically important in 1.9. And obviously you can have, you know, multiple wither health bars now instead of just one. So that's going to be useful. Then Grum uh, recently tweeted out um, the image. Uh, or actually reported that you can now... Ooh, there we go. Ooh, yeah, that looks cool. It looks like an N on this map, though. <laughs> Dang. Is this Z going out too far? Is this going out too... This, this is not going out too far, is it? Oh, it is. Son of a gun. All right, we gotta fix this real quick. So anyway, um, Grum, yeah, tweeted out. Whoops, let's get out of here. Tweeted out an image that um, basically showed that there will be a the ability to um, change change item textures based upon durability. So I can show you that here. So he tweeted out this photo of a um, carrot on a stick. And then this photo of carried on a stick that has heavy durability. So you can actually now, or in the future, change um, yeah, the block model based on the durability. So that's going to be really interesting to see what resource pack, ma pack makers can do with that. There's got to be some dirt around here. There we go. Perfect. So that's that change. Also, Sarge has been very cryptic in a new block that he has been working on. So here's an image of that here. You can see it's like a brightly colored block surrounded by um, uh, armor stands sitting down. And it's not really clear exactly what the block is, um, but should be interesting nonetheless. He also tweeted out this image of it, <laughs> even more cryptic with a giant question mark in it. And it seems to be surrounded by some darker blocks, so obsidian, uh, coal block, some, some dark wool. Um, not sure if that's like something to activate it. Uh, I've speculated it could be like an anti-beacon, so to give like negative negative beacon effects. Could also be like a dragon egg incubator, because they have been talking about um, yeah, redoing the dragon egg fight. It could be um, none of the above. It could be something totally different. Uh, Sarge has talked about um, a few images that uh, he's been working on. Whoop, let me update this. A few images that he's been working on, or a few blocks he's been working on that are not going to be available in survival. Um, but instead, let me just eat something here. Instead, they will. Simply provide, like, aesthetic um, purposes and things like that. Um. So yeah, that's what's going on there on the 1.9 front. A lot of exciting stuff, really. Um, Dinderbones also said he's going to make some change to inventory. Uh, they've actually asked for community feedback on, you know, sort of what they'd like to see in the combat update, how they'd like uh, stuff to change. Personally, I like to see stuff like um, a slingshot um, to launch splash potions. Um, so it'd be similar to, like, the bow, so, like, you have to draw it back, and then you could fire potions long distances that would be just amazing I think I think it would revel just that one item alone would revolutionize PvP I mean you can hit people with poison potions instant damage potions from a distance like that that would be amazing um, and yeah I think like a good a good crafting recipe would be something similar to this so with two leads a bowl and two sticks it's not too terribly expensive but it's not too cheap either so I think that would be a pretty good compromise for it. Um, you could also shoot like health potions too if you wanted to like serve like a supporting role in battle. Um, so it just gives people a lot more options to uh, to sort of play around with. Um, so yeah, that would be that would be awesome. Also, you know, 
uh, updates to, you know, potions and more enchantments and more weapons. I'm all for that. I can't wait to see what they come up with. Anyway, this is the new map of Zerzera Zera here. As you can see, we got the post office right there. And we got the town square right there with the Z. <laughs> it looks like an N now. There's a Z. Boom, boom, boom. Nice. Zoro lives there, apparently. No. Um, but yeah. I like how it's turned out so far. Uh, we got two more buildings to put. We got to put a church right there. And then the animal market over here. Um, so next time, I think what we will do... I think we will go exploring... Or do redstone or both. Um, because... I want to get some podzol for the uh, animal market over there. I think that would look like a... That would look like a good... Um, good base. Like a good grass type thing for the animal market. Unfortunately though, I have not discovered a mega taiga biome in this world yet. So I may have to do some exploring uh, next time. And yeah, I know... It. Whoops! What the hell? <laughs> I just walked right into the freaking wall. Okay. Alright guys, so there's just a few more things I want to mention here real quickly. Um, the first one is that SpaceX, um, the rocket company, will be launching a mission called CRS-6 uh, to the International Space Station on April 13th. Um, I don't know if you guys have been following developments in space travel recently, but things have gotten really, really, really interesting. Um, so basically what SpaceX plans to do with this mission is, number one, primary mission is to resupply the International Space Station with uh, food and experiments and things of that nature. But it also plans to attempt a landing of the first stage on an autonomous barge in the middle of the ocean. Which is, um, simply put, freaking awesome. Um, so, I don't know if you guys have been following it, but they tried it last time with CRS-5. And it failed dramatically, but um, it was really, really close. They got the rocket to hit the barge, um, but just a little bit too hard, so it exploded. Um, this time, I think they will probably be successful. So, uh, if you want to see a groundbreaking and revolutionary space flight... Um, Check out the SpaceX links in the description. Um, I've been following it really, really closely because I'm pretty much a space enthusiast. Um, but yeah, a lot of really cool stuff is going on with space travel right now. Uh, most of it is a precursor to Mars. And yeah, it's kind of cool to see sort of the progression of space travel um, in modern times rather than back in the Apollo era when it was sort of going full bore back then. Um, anyway, though, I just wanted to make you guys aware of that because, yeah, it's freaking awesome. And it's going to be really cool to see what happens in the future with um, SpaceX and space exploration. Um, if I had to guess right now, I would guess that SpaceX will beat NASA to Mars. I'm just saying. That's what it looks like right now. Um, so, yeah, challenge issued to NASA, I guess. Uh, let me just put away some more stuff here. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to say, guys. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I really do appreciate you guys liking and sharing. If you enjoyed, that does help out the channel a lot. And thank you all for 120,000 subscribers. Uh, we just recently passed that mark. And that would not be possible without all of your support. So once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Cub Fan. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.